All right, so next uh, topic is security market indices. The topic is about how the indices or indexes are con constructed. Okay, which are the popular ones in India? Yes, Nifty and Sensex. And the global popular exchanges are or indexes are Nasdaq. Yes, Dow Jones, Russell 2000, S&P 500. These are the uh, popular indexes globally. What we want to understand here is what is the logic behind the construction of these indexes in terms of why they are constructed and second, how they are constructed. So let's look at some interesting example. This is a screenshot I took uh, of NS India last year. These are some of the indexes that we have. CNX Nifty, Junior, LIX, VIX, CNX 100, 500. These are some more indexes. These are now uh, sector specific indexes. Okay, so we have bank, auto, commodities, consumption, energy, finance. Okay, so either it could be a broad market index which is catering to the entire market or it could be a sector specific index which is catering to this particular sector. Is that fine? Dividend opportunity is uh, picking up. See the, you would understand that once we finish this reading. That indexes could be constructed either based on sector or based on investment style. Right? So there could be multiple ways in which uh, the sectors could be constructed. A security market index represents the performance of an asset class, security, security market or a segment of market. The performance of the The performance of the market or segment over a period of time is represented by the percentage change in the value of index. Now these are different ways in which you can construct an indices. So I want you to make uh, one big flowchart with me. Okay, this, this flowchart in a way would summarize the entire reading and if you know this flowchart well you should be able to answer all of the questions from this reading. So security index. We will divide them into roughly four categories. The first one is price weighted index. Second one is equal weighted index. Third one is market cap weighted index fourth one is fundamental weighted index now each of these index will have two ways in which we can construct the index. Either we consider only the price return or we consider total return. In the same fashion, either we consider the price return or we consider total return. Exactly same. Either we consider only the price return or we consider total return. The reason why I am making you write explicitly because a lot of people get confused. When the question says that construct a price return, people interpret that as if the question is asked to construct a price weighted index. They are different things. Okay, So this row that you see here. This row is to determine what should be the weights allocated to an individual security. Okay, So either we take price as a weight or we take equal weight or we take market cap as a weight or some other fundamental variable. And this price return and total return is how to calculate return of the constituent securities. Either we take only the capital appreciation 
or we take capital appreciation as well as dividend received okay so the methodology in which you would construct these indexes okay i'm writing a common methodology for both of them step number one you would calculate an average of price step number one would be to calculate an average of price and step number two calculate percentage increase or decrease in price step number one is to calculate average of price step number two calculate percentage increase or decrease in price in average price okay. equal weighted return will have steps exactly opposite of this okay and on the exam i want you to solve these questions using the methodology we are using in the class not the way it's presented in your notes it's much more intuitive that way here step number one we will calculate percentage return on each stock and then step number two we will calculate average okay so we have in a way that inverted that process here we first calculate average then we calculate percentage here we first calculated percentage then we are going to calculate average here step number one calculate market cap at beginning and end and step number 2 calculate percentage calculate market cap at beginning and ending and step number 2 calculate percentage and in fundamental weighted index you would not be required to calculate the methodology varies from index to index market cap at beginning and end and then step number 2 calculate percentage increase or decrease have we done so we'll do two examples i'm sure as of now it's not making sense to you once we do those two examples your the life would be much more easier you would understand why it is done this way example number 1 let us say our index is made of three constituent securities security a security b security c the opening price of this security was 100 500 and 1000 the closing price of this security was 130 600 and in fact instead of 600 okay fine let's keep it as 800 okay so 100 became 130 500 became 600 1000 became 800 the total number of stocks which this company has issued is 100 100 100 100 100 100 calculate question number 1 price weighted rate of return question number 2 equal weighted rate of return and question number 3 market cap weighted rate of return is it fine and these are weights the return that we are going to use in this case is price return why because we do not have the dividend data right there is a possibility these stocks have also paid dividend had we also considered dividend as a part of the return it becomes a total return
but if you only consider the price appreciation then it is a price return so let me calculate price for you now understand the name itself will tell you that weight weight of constituent security has to be the price of that security correct so do you agree with the fact that security c should have a substantially higher weight correct and prima facie if you would observe a has increased b has also increased but c has decreased in terms of percentage a has increased by 30 percent in terms of percentage b has increased by 20 percent and c has decreased by 20 percent but because the weight of c is so large that there is a possibility that index might show a negative return correct so now read your two steps step number one take an average of all of them and then step number two calculate percentage so let me first add up all the three so this is hundred plus five hundred six hundred plus thousand sixteen hundred this is seven thirty this is fifteen thirty now sixteen hundred divided by three how much would be the average five hundred and thirty three point three three and 800 divided by sorry 1530 divided by 3 how much would be the average 510 so this was your step number one step number two from 533 it has decreased to 510 what is the percentage decrease Four point four point three seven percent. Now this we could have also done directly. Okay, what we could have simply said is sixteen hundred became fifteen thirty. So even if you calculate percentage decrease, it would be same because we divided both of them by three. But just so that it becomes easier to remember, first we calculate average, then we calculate percentage. Is it fine? Yes, even if you don't calculate, even if you don't say divided by 3, if you just say 1600 became 1530, you would get the correct answer. Now, let us look at equal weighted index. In equal weighted index, first we calculate, in equal weighted index, first we calculate percentage. So, stock A has earned a return of 30%. Stock B has earned a return of 20%. Stock C has earned a return of minus 20%. And then in step number 2, we calculate average of those returns. And average of those returns would be 10%. So this is your equal weighted rate of return. Is that easy? In price weighted, you calculate average, then you calculate percentage. In equal weighted, you calculated percentage, then you calculate average. Now let us understand why. Okay, why it's it's behaving like this. In price weighted, how you can think of it is you have purchased one stock each. In price weighted, you have purchased one stock each. So originally you made investment of how much? Sixteen hundred. But security C was what portion of your investment it was 1000 divided by 1600 are you following this that means the weight of that security the price of that security is actually the weight of that security now since your 1600 in total became 1530 therefore your portfolio has lost by 4.37 percent okay this is the meaning now in equal weighted you have invested i'm just creating a hypothetical scenario you've invested 100 rupee in each share following the difference equal weight that means we invest 100 rupee in security a we invest 100 rupee in security b we invest 100 rupee in security c now i'm assuming fungibility 
meaning of which is I'm assuming that we can buy 20% of stock B or we can take a LCM of all these values and we make sure that we invest same amount in all the security. If you invest same amount in all the security, security A grew by 30%, B grew by 20%, C minus 20%, therefore on average your portfolio has earned 10%. That is the meaning of equal weighted rate of return. Is that fine? Now the third one, market cap. Market cap is simple. You calculate market cap at the beginning. 100 into 100 is how much? 10,000. Then 500 into 100 is how much? 50,000. And 1,000 into 200 is how much? That would be 2 lakh. So total would be 2 lakh 60,000. 130 into 100 would be 1 lakh sorry 13,000. 600 into 100 would be 60,000. Am I doing it right? Yes. 60,000. And 800 into 200 would give us 1 lakh 60,000. So that is 220, 233. And once we have the total index value from 260, it has become 233. So then you do the step number two. What is the percentage return? How much? Negative? No, no. 260 became 233. Negative 10 point? 30 percent. That is your market cap weighted index. Is that easy? No, it assumes that you are investing same amount in each of the stock. Equal weight for all the securities. Equal weighted is more popular for uh, more popular index in hedge fund world. Okay, why? Because when you would uh, study alternative investments, you would understand how hedge funds are structured. And once you understand how hedge funds are structured, you would appreciate that why uh, equal weighted mo makes more sense for them. Should we go ahead? Hmm? Let's do example number two now. So before the exams, what I want you to do is just revise these two examples. You should be fine. They would cover every uh, possible type of numerical that could be tested from this question. Let us say again we have three securities. Security A, B, C. We have price at time 0, we have price at time 1, we have dividend at time 1 and we have quantity. Price at time 0 was 100, 200, 1000. Price at time 1 was 120, let us say 250 and 750. Dividend that we have received at time 1 was 5, 10 and 50 
and quantity quantity means how many shares are issued in the market so 100 100 and 10 okay just to keep the calculations easy now i'm going to solve six different index values or six different index return values the first one price weighted price weighted but price weighted i'm going to calculate two separate returns we will calculate either only the price return or we will calculate total return so let us take a total of all the p0 values 1000 plus 200 plus 100 total is 1300 750 plus 250 plus 120 1120 50 plus 60 plus 5 65 in price return you would consider only the price you would ignore the dividend so you will say 1300 has become 11 1300 have become 1120 what is the rate of return that we have earned tell me how much yeah what is the negative rate of return minus 13.82 percentage fine total return we will say 1300 has become 1120 but we have received a dividend of 65 so that's 1185 1300 have become 1185 what is the rate of return we have earned 8 point negative any questions and again easiest way to think of rise weighted is you have one share each so if I have one share each at time 0 I invested 1300 Zach at time 1 the value of those shares was 1120 but I had received dividend of 65 so my total loss 8.84 percent let us calculate equal weighted rate of return equal weighted rate of return again we will calculate either the price return or we would calculate the total return if you are to calculate price return a has increased by 20 percent b has increased by 20 50 on 200 that's 25 percent and c has decreased by 25 percent so that would be 20 divided by 3 which would be 6 point no is it correct yeah 6.66 percent if we are expected to consider total return 100 has become 120 plus I have received dividend of 5 25 percent this would be 30 percent and this would be minus 20 percent so that would be 35 divided by 3 that would be 11.67 percent done Should we do market cap? Any questions you want to ask up to this? Please be honest. Anything you haven't understood, please ask. Shaisa? Huh, Kashyap, have you understood this? Yes? Okay. Then market cap. So let me calculate opening market cap. Closing market cap. And let me also calculate total dividend. So opening market cap 100 into 100, 10,000, 200 into 10, no, no, 200 into 100, that's 20,000, 1,000 into 10, 
that's 10,000. 120 into 100, 12,000. 250 into 100, 25,000. 750 into 10, 7,500. Total 30, 40,000. That's 37, 44, 500. Total dividend is 500, 1000 and 500. Total dividend is 2000. Please cross check my calculations. Once this is done, then we will use market cap weighted index either we will use price return or we will use total return price return 40,000 has become 44,500 so that's a increase of 11.25% and 40,000 have become 44,500 plus we have received additional 2,000 so that's 16.25% 40,000 has become 44,500 plus 2,000 please cross check the calculations